There's no friction in the suspension right now. And so what slip plates allow you to do is get true measurements when the car isn't loaded. It really simulates because when you're driving the car and the wheels are moving forward, the only thing that's supporting it is the suspension. There's no friction side to side on the tire because it adjusts itself. And that's what slip plates do. These are old, you know, slip plates are the best. I think uh, Andy has some better ones. And then scales, when we do scales on it, we put the scales on the plate because if you just put the car on the scales again, the suspension tends to be loaded. It'll be more vertical, and you get and it binds a little bit on the scales. I mean, it doesn't really matter if a few pounds, probably not. But I mean, that's uh, that's how we do it. Um, any other questions on that? Okay, the last thing we're gonna. All right. What is one of the rear straight pipes? Yeah. The other one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's two different ways of getting the same numbers. Okay. Um, they both have their trade-offs. One is a little easier at one point, and the other is a little easier at the other point. Um, but you get the same numbers. You know, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm only using something. mine to compare and the side to side here. Andy uses his to actually give him. Not only can he compare side to side, but he can actually get true total measurement. The downside of, of anything is the setup is extremely critical. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you're an eighth of an inch off or a sixteenth of an inch off, everything is cocked to one side or the other. That's the hardest thing about doing it on a street car. Again, race cars, they actually, if you look, they'll have threaded holes on the chassis and they just have a bar. And they just bolt the bar to the front and back and boom, it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, they can do it at the track. You've seen it. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, but it, but it's hard on this because you have to get the exact center line. How Andy does it is he actually measures humps side to side to center it like that. So you, if, if anyone wants a more detailed explanation, yeah. just come up and see me later. Yeah, you, walk, you, walk you, it. If you can. You can do it. The, the use of the aluminum bars is, is a really big time saver because I, I have fun. Yeah, it'll take you forever. Yeah, it's totally square. I'm actually going to build a rig like Andy um, has built here because the nice thing is, is if you're an eighth of an inch off on one side, we well, only have to move it in a sixteenth of an inch to achieve symmetry on both sides. And if you're not moving two sides, I'm moving one side. Last thing we're going to touch on here, we're going through a lot of stuff, is corner balance on a car. It's a term that you know I'm sure everybody's heard. I don't know how many people here have adjustable perches on their shocks. In other words, a shock absorber that is a threaded body that you can adjust this ride height and spring load. How many people run these here? One, two, two, two maybe four. Okay. You cannot corner a balance a load is unless you have a, an adjustable shock. The factory shocks actually have grooves cut in them for different general settings. They're like a quarter inch apart. They're really not adjustable for all practical purposes. So to corner balance a car, number one, you, you have to have an adjustable shock. Um, Nitrons are great. I've used them for years. And this one here is their, this is a GT3 setup. Yes. Which is their gorgeous racing shock. And what's nice about this shock is not only can you adjust the spring perch, but the bottom of the shock adjusts also, which allows you to fine tune corner balance and droop and, and everything else. Um, but yeah, this is a, a great way. From the factory, you got what you got. When you put a car in scales, you know, it's going to weigh what it weighs. They actually are surprisingly not that far off. They're 15, 20 pounds, the, the ones maybe a little more. Ideally, the rule of thumb with cars, if you want to corner balance them, one half of one percent difference side to side. Now, on a 2,000 pound car, you're talking 10 pounds. This car, right now, we have corner balance with Chenu in it. When, if you do a corner balance, what you got to do is, is keep track, because if you don't, you, you go crazy. Um, you make a little chart like this, 
And then every time you do an adjustment, you make another chart. Now, what we, we did last night is we, we had corner balanced this car a few months ago. It had changed a little spring set thing. And it was about 20 pounds, 22 off last night. We, we readjusted it, so it's, it's good now. What we have here is the front left wheel weighs 424 pounds with new in it. The right front is 395, left rear is 640, the right rear is 611. This is the ride height we have right now. 119, 120, 124, 124. Empty. This car as it weighs sitting there right now. 369, 368, 580, 576. The corner weights empty are a three pound off. They're 948 pounds from left rear to right front and 945 pounds from left front to right rear. Does everybody follow that? Where we're at right now is 1035 exactly. So we're exactly 50% off right now on it. Now what will happen here when you adjust the car, you'll take your readings and what happens when Chinoo went in the car, if you look at the ride height differences, once he put his weight, what it did, it lowered the, the left rear by two millimeters. It, uh, I mean, yeah, because we were 126 empty, we're 124. It lowered two millimeters on the right, on the left front. But it actually, we were 120, it also lowered this, and this stayed the same. If you, when you adjust ride height, like if I tighten this wheel here, I would increase the weight here, I would increase the weight a little bit here, the, the weight here would decrease, the weight here would decrease, the ride height here would raise, the ride height here would lower, and the ride height here actually would raise just a, a hair also if you have a sway bar that has load in it. Carl, I may want to explain what you mean when you say tighten, right. adjusting that ride height. Right. You're, you're, yeah. What we're saying is tightening is this spring perch. Tightening is tightening it down and compressing the spring. What you do is when you're going to ride height a car, you, I call it index. You take a sharpie, you put a line here and a line on the perch, so you know every time you're doing a turn what a turn is. So we, we use it. You would do one turn tight one turn loose. You loosen the spring perch and it's trial and error how much change it makes. On these nitrons with this spring rate, every turn on the shock makes approximately 15 pounds of weight shifting. But it isn't just 15 pounds here. It might do six here, three here. It's a total weight shift of, of 15 pounds. And corner balancing is tedious. It's, you know, to corner balance and align a car, Three hours would be quick. Five, six is probably an average. Yeah. How do you measure right now? Okay, that's good. And that's our last thing we're going to touch on. If I can find it. it. Okay. On lotuses, can we put this up in the air? Are you sure everybody? You made a comment about the front sway bar being about Right. Right. Chanu yeah. just came up with adjustable end links for your sway bar. Now what this allows you, everybody knows what a sway bar is, it connects your, these cars don't use rear bars, they just use a front bar. Now what a sway bar does when a car leans, it loads the other wheel to even out the lean. And the adjustable sway bars have several holes in them, which allow you, by moving the connection between the control arm and the sway bar forward or back, you're increasing or decreasing the leverage on that bar for an effective hardening it or softening it. The problem with it is once you get a car ride height set, the sway bar, because the car, nothing is perfect, you'll have a load in that bar. In other words, that bar, if you disconnect it and you have it on scales normally, the, the weight will change, or the bar will jack weight. The school of thought is that you, you, if you read on, on corner balance, you usually will say disconnect the sway bars. And then corner balance, which theoretically is right. But then when you reconnect the sway bar, it's different. So the only way, either